All righty, Mr. Gatekeeper here. Proud distributor for HG Semi. And uh, bear with me, I'm trying my new uh, head apparatus that is holding my phone. <laughs> Major shout out to Mr. Andy G. My homeboy, Mr. Andy G. My good buddy out there around the uh, New York area gave me the idea and sent me a link to purchase this uh, head apparatus here to hold my phone. He said it might help with the shakiness. What do you think? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> But if I try to keep my head still with a good motion, it might be worth using. It's kind of long in front of my face here, but I thought I'd try it with this video and see what happens. Well, anyway, I wanted to make a video because I have had one question about these transistors that's been asked by, uh, to me by quite a few people now. And one of the most frequently, frequently asked questions are, how come when I buy these HG transistors, why is the number that's written on the front come on where's my autofocus there we go how come my number that's written on the front is not the same when I hook it up to my old trusty atlas here's I'm about to touch the phone there whenever I need it to focus well, that's a very, 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 very simple question. I think what I meant to say is a very simple answer. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I need. To, I hadn't had no caffeine yet today either, y'all. Y'all bear with me. But anyway, that's a very, very easy question. Okay. The factory that is very very nice to be matching these for an extra extra fee of course it's a little work when you get into matching these by the hundreds I mean these are being matched individually and that is included in the fee that the cost you know from the factory they are using different equipment than we're using Okay, they're using a very expensive piece of equipment called a curve slash loop tracer. Okay, and it's just as simple as this. The equipment they are using are putting a little bit more current into the transistor upon test. Okay, this is an HFV is a ratio, okay, between the actual base current to collector current. All it is is a ratio, just like standing wave. SWR is a ratio of your reflect coefficient. It's just a simple ratio of your total output that you're putting to the load and how much reflect. You know, for example, if you're putting 100 watts out of your radio or your amplifier to your load, which is an antenna, and how much reflect do you have from that 100 watts that's when we go to the 1.1 1 .1, 1 1.2 it's a ratio it's just a ratio of the total amount of reflect of the total output of power what's going on back here oh we got yeah hey, just leave it out there at the just sit on the ground man yeah i know i got a lot of cases coming in six of them but yeah, just sit them out there, but I ain't got a sign from none of them. To, all right. Sorry about that, y'all. Had the UPS man dropping off some, uh, probably some repairs or something. But anyway. So the HFE number is the same. It, it's a ratio. And it's, it's, it's a number showing us the ability of amplification from the base to the current. And it is a DC characteristic. The only thing this number means to us is not how high or low it is. Just because you got a higher number doesn't exactly mean that transistor is going to be more powerful. No, sir. No, sir. I have an 8-pill here at the house. 
in every transistor, if you took the transistors out of that 8 pill and tested them, they would all be in the single digits of HFE. Literally, two, I think two to five is the range of the HFE. If you put them on this atlas right now, you would see the HFE is two, five, four, three, and then single digits. And that cotton picker puts out just as much power as it did when, when they were new. I mean, that thing has no problem getting up to 12, 1300 watts RMS if I wanted to. You see what I'm saying? The main thing we are focused on here is the golden rule here is you want that number to be the same you want to match them by this number and there's a few reasons of why that is it's a look at it as a characteristic number you want these transistors when you're putting them in sets of four eight sixteen you want them all to have the same characteristics okay these hfe numbers they can change by temperature they can change by drive levels this is a base set test, okay? Let me show, show you what I uh, mean. All right, we have a HG2879 hooked up right now, okay? We're going to go ahead and do a test. Um, so I was already here doing some matching for uh, one of my VIP customers and thought I'd be a good time to go ahead and make this video. All right. We see this a NPN silicon transistor. All right, so let me know I got everything hooked up properly. All right, we got diode protection. All right, we got a current gain HFE value of 42. I'm gonna go ahead. So I'm looking through the phone right now of everything I'm doing. This might be a little tough. Let me look around the phone here. There we go. All right, 42. All right, this ratio is being given to us from this amount of test current from the collector, okay? This right here is letting us know how much voltage it's taking to turn this transistor on. Or we're running at 0.6 volts during this test, okay? And there's your base current. 4.81 milliamps. All right, this is what you want to look at right here. We're getting this value of 42 of the HFE value from using 4.81 milliamps of current off 0.6 volts. All right, it's real simple. This device can't do it, but if this device was sophisticated enough for me to turn this current up to 8 milliamps or 10 milliamps or 12 milliamps, this HFE value would be higher. I repeat, listen to me very carefully, okay? If I was able to turn this amperage on the base, that's what the HFE is. It's a ratio of amplification from the base to the collector. It is a DC characteristic, okay? If I was able to turn that amperage up, let me go ahead and swing through here one more time here, okay? Oops. If I was able to turn this milliamperage up higher, this HFE value would go higher, okay? So that's what I mean. The factory over at HG Semi. Well, their Pacific machine that they're using to go ahead and match these bad boys for me. Obviously, you can tell their machine is using a test with a little bit more higher amperage on the base. Okay, so they're using a total different machine. All right. So with their machine, we're getting a HFE of 63. Well, the Atlas right here is not specifically designed just to test power transistors. It's designed to test a wide range of transistors. And they pretty much s picked a default amperage that would be ideal for a wide range of transistors. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So that's why it's testing at the amperage that it tests at for this particular transistor. Okay. So...
That's what that is. Now here's another prime example. I'm going to go ahead and bust open a brand new pack of Toshiba's non-dots from RF Parts. Okay, six A's. Six A's. All right. As you notice, I can't sit here and tell you what RF Parts uses for their testing. But we have a, a supposedly a HFE value of 100. Okay. All right. Let's unhook this. Go ahead and put this in the pile with the 42s over there. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this Toshiba. I mean, I got these AGCs on here just so it can, uh, I can easily go from transistor to transistor when I'm needing to test these with speed. And I'm about to make a little apparatus where I can just put the transistor down in a in a hole and use a little, uh, well, I won't get into it, but basically I'll be able to test them even quicker. All right, we got a brand new, trans, uh, brand new Toshiba in line. And it's written on there 100 for HFE. So let's see what the HFE value is using the Atlas. All right. We have an HFE value of 78. Okay. 78. And as you see, dot .79 milliamps. And the reason why that is different is because this transistor is cutting on at a little bit higher voltage, dot .62 volts. Okay, so it's taking dot .62 volts to put this transistor into conduction, to turn actually turn it on. Now, let me put this in here real quick. You heard me say that this number doesn't mean much, at, but as in the aspect of we want these numbers to be the same. I don't care if they're 24, 34, 44, as long as the number is the same. It don't matter if it's 77 with these. We are wanting, all, the only thing I care about, and that y'all should really care about too, I and mean, I know we all like higher numbers, I understand that. There ain't nothing wrong with wanting the higher HFE, I ain't saying that. But when it comes down to it, what we are using these for, especially in the Class C amplifiers. All you want is to make sure that these numbers are the same, okay? Or at least close. I mean, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, I've done made a rule for myself to not go one number off. So I can go 43, 44, 43, 44, but I don't want to go no more than that if I can't help it. But if I can help it, I'm going to go all same number when I'm building an amplifier. Unless I just absolutely cannot help it, then I may go one number off. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But you want to keep them as close as possible, the same number, if you are able to. All right. When you're talking about an AB biased amplifier, remember how I told you this is a DC characteristic of the HFE value. When you AB biased amplifier, we are using a DC voltage on the base of the transistor. Okay. HFE is very important when it comes to an AB bias amplifier because you want each of them transistors to be turning on at the same voltage. Meaning, if you have one transistor with HFE value of 78 and one with HFE value of 34, there's a good chance that each of those transistors might not be turning on at the same voltage. That can be a problem. Because when it comes to biasing, that's what it's all about with biasing. Is the cut on voltage, how long it's staying on with the actual conduction angle that it's running at. You want those transistors to be the same characteristic. So if it comes to an AB biased amplifier, yeah, I may really make sure that I'm using the same number, same cut on voltage. And as you'll notice, all of these transistors I just matched here in the last 30 minutes or so, they all have the same exact cut on voltage because they're all so close to each other in characteristics, okay? You know, if you see all these transistors, it might took five or six more of these amount just to get these, or maybe even more, to get these amount that are the same in characteristic. 
you have to go through a lot to get them that way. That's why there's an extra fee incorporated into the cost for, for, for me getting these matched like this. Okay. I'm still going through them and I'm doing what you can call a precision match, as you can say. <laughs> and uh, just to be on the safe side, because, you know, my VIP customer needs, you know, a large amount. I'm going to make sure they're getting. You know what I'm saying? And I make sure to make all these transistors that are being sent out are matched together as well. It's just an important factor. But they are, they're all matched so close already. I really don't have to worry about it. But I just wanted to go ahead and make this video and show that. Okay. So that Toshiba was a 78. Let's look up the next one. This is straight from RF Parts. Let's see how close they are. All right. The first one was a 78. Wow. Now, I have heard this from people that when you get these bad boys from RF parts, it's a good idea to uh, double check. <laughs> Now, you know, at least, the, as you can see, the, these two transistors are cut known at the same voltage. That is a big plus when you're going to, a, when you're talking about an AB biased amplifier. I would feel completely safe with using these in an AB biased amplifier, which is what I'm about to do. You always want to look at that leakage, too. If you got a transistor with leakage, do not use it. So as you see, even from RF parts themselves, you can see that they're, and I mean, I've seen this with all of them. I can go get a match set of 16 that I've gotten there, and they do vary, you know. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? The, the meter's sitting here showing it. But these are Toshibas. And we all know Toshibas. They have no problem being a little little away from each other. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. But their tolerance of, uh, of matching, as you can see, the way I get these HGs from the factory are way, way closer in tolerance when it comes to matching than uh, the Toshibas are. But... A Toshiba is a Toshiba, and it always will be a Toshiba. <laughs> and they will, they will not always be here either. So I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate y'all hanging out with me for a second right here in uh, the northeast end of Georgia. The old gatekeeper on the air. You might hear me say 1883 as well. And uh, sorry about these Motorola's right here in the bunch. That's for a repair I'm about to take care of. Now let's look this let's look up this Motorola just for the fun of it, y'all. Yeah, just for the heck of it before I press the stop button. Let's see what this Motorola's looking like. 455. HFE value of 55. Ooh, dot six four volts. It takes a little bit more to turn that transistor on. All right, dot fifty five. These are the same as you see. Motorola they use a color dot system. Now, maybe y'all can learn something else in this video too. Motorola uses a color dot system for their HFV HFV range. Okay, so they do it by a color dot system because Motorola's can be so widespread from each other. Because there's so many Motorola's made, man. Way more Motorola's than Toshiba's were made, believe it or not. Okay? So they went by a dot system. I got um, got it wrote down. And the, the highest HFE value uh, Motorola you'll see is a double orange dot. I got two double orange dot 455's uh, right now, actually. But that's the highest HFE value of a Motorola is a double orange Okay, but they've got it done by the uh, uh, color. So let's see how close they are with these. Look at it, 51. Okay, so that with a Motorola is going to be considered within the proper range of the blue. If you look at the chart for the blue, 
But you can find these charts in, in a couple of the old school uh, data sheets and such. And you'll see that those right there both are within that of the blue. If you look at the double orange, that cut bigger is up there. I can't remember exactly how high it is. I just lost that other 455. Where'd it go? The things are so small it couldn't have went far. There it is. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. If you got any questions, shoot me some questions on the comment. I think I'm going to post this over to Facebook as well. And uh, what can I say, y'all? It's an HG Nation. These things are a blessing. I'm so thankful for uh, the guys over at HG, uh, working hard as they are to make these things have the the strength and the ruggedness that they have it's it's absolutely amazing it, it from our testing so far which is quite a few months it's hard to break these things it really is unless you get crazy with the voltage if you get crazy with the voltage yeah they'll blow just like a toshiba will blow any transistor will blow and if you get crazy with the heat any transistor will blow you keep your s's down you keep your heat under control, and you don't get nuts with it, these things are going to last you. And they definitely got the output. No doubt about that. And always remember, if it's making the bird watts, or the RMS, or the average, however you want to look at it, then the PEP watts will follow, because it's a ratio relationship that follow each other. But just because you see high PEP watts or peak watts doesn't always mean that the bird is there. And I've never said why, right, and explained that. Well, it's simple. When you're looking at the peak watts, circuitry has been added to the meter to calculate that peak watts, okay? Harmonics, intermodulation, Let's see, what was the third one? My brain's sitting here. Intermodulation, harmonics, spurious emissions. These type, of, these type of things can be fooled by the meter. Even coax lengths, believe it or not. If your test bench ain't done properly and it ain't cut exactly to the HFE value to the load, I mean, different, different things. People can do some wild things to trick these meters. They really can I've seen it happen. I've seen 2,000 Pequots with only 300 bird. I've seen, um, uh, let's see, I've seen 1,500 Pequots with 100 bird. I've seen uh, 1,200 Pequots with uh, about 110 bird. And those three that I told you were from personal amplifiers and myself. And I've seen radios doing 120 peak watts, but only giving you four bird watts. There's something wrong with that ratio. And so it's a ratio. When it comes to radios, it is a little different, but you want that ratio being as close as possible. If it's doing about 25 bird, then 100 peak watts is fine. 80 peak watts is fine, but not four bird and 100 peak. See, something's wrong with that. I think we got a little bit of harmonics there or something there. You know, the radio just needs a good tune done to it. All right. We ain't going to get no deeper into that old gatekeeper out here around the northeast end. I got some shipping I got to do, man. We got to get these transistors packaged up, and I'm gone. It's an HG Nation, baby. Bye-bye.